Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an accordion component using React. So if you're a beginner at React or a beginner in programming, this will be a great tutorial to watch because I'm going to be just covering a small amount of features in React that will help you build out components like this. So if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to be posting videos like this in the future. So let's just go ahead and jump to it. Alright, so to build out an accordion, typically what you want is you want some type of container that has like a header and a body. And when you click on the container, like the, you know, the, uh, the div or whatever, it basically expands and shows you some more content. So if you are pretty new to React, you probably heard of use state, and we can use that to keep track of if the accordion is open or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build out that little container I was talking about inside this app component. And we are going to basically just give it a class of accordion. And I'm going to give it another div. It's going to be accordion title. You know, I'm going to call it header. Header might be a better thing. And then I'm going to do the same thing and give it an accordion body and save that file. So now in this case, um, what we want to do is if I get some fake text for the body, let's see, text lorem ipsum, let's see. I just want to grab some text, so I'll grab, uh, I don't need a description, let's see, I'll click generate, get some lorem ipsum, and that should be good. I'll just grab this, and I'm going to put that in my body here. And now on the right, notice that it shows up here. And for the, the header, we might want to actually add some type of header. So I'll say like, um, what I'm going to be doing here is making a chocolate chip cookies accordion with like a description below. Of course, we're going to be using fake, fake text here. So, all right, so this should make sense. This is just HTML. We have, you know, a header that displays some text and we have a body. But what we want to do is we want to make this header clickable. And when we click it, it's going to toggle if this is shown or not. Okay, so using use state, if I can, I can import this up here. I can declare use state a boolean and give it false, and I'm gonna just go ahead and set that equal to two variables. I'm gonna say is uh, open, I guess I could say, and then I'm gonna say set is open. Okay, so those are the two variables we can use, and just to kind of show you, we can conditionally render this body out based on is open. Okay, so in JSX, I'm just going to say curly braces is open and this body, and that is how you conditionally render things. And since this is defaulted to false, notice that the body doesn't render. And just to kind of test stuff out along the way, I'll change it to true and make sure it does render if I set it to true. All right, so we're on the right direction, the right path. Now, we need to be able to expand this when we click on the accordion header. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do first of all is it would be nice if we had some styles here. So I'm going to go ahead and say cursor pointer and I want to make it so when we hover over this it gives us a little bit of a, you know, give some user feedback that like, hey, we can actually click it. And let me add some padding too. I'll do like padding 10 pixels maybe. All right, so it's kind of strange that it's jumping around, but this isn't a CSS tutorial, so let's just kind of keep going. So now when we click on this, we want to show the body. So how do we do that? Well, in React, there is an on-click event listener that you can attach to, or a property, I guess you can call it. So let's say on-click. That is going to take some curly braces, and it's going to call a function. And the function that we need to call is basically this one, right? Set is open, and we want to change the state of the accordion to be... In this case, I'll just say truth right now. And this won't achieve what we want because now it's open when you click it, but it doesn't close back. You know what? Let me, um, I put the padding on the wrong thing. Let me do this. There we go. All right. So like I said, you click it once it opens, but then you can't close it again. Well, we just want to toggle it a great thing to remember in terms of booleans and toggling is to toggle something you just set it equal to itself 
with the not symbol in front of it, right? So if I do this, now when I click it and click it again, it's going to toggle. So there you have it right there. You have basically the, the bare bones of an accordion, okay? So super straightforward. Um, what we want to do though, to give the user a little bit more feedback is typically an accordion has like a symbol or an icon that shows if it's open or not. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make another div and just put a symbol in it. So plus means that the accordion is closed. And we can align this to the right and float it to the right in a second. In fact, let me give it a class name called um, accordion indicator. And we want to make this a minus if the accordion is open and a plus if the accordion is closed. So how do you do that in JSX and React and stuff? <clears throat> well, obviously we need to interpolate something and make it print out plus or minus. This is just pseudocode right now, but we want to toggle between them. So again, if is open Boolean is true, we could just use a ternary here and say if O is open, then we want to render out a plus sign. Otherwise we render out a minus sign. Okay, so now when I click it, notice that it's actually switched. I need to um, flip this around. So let me do that. All right. Because I think that's how you do accordions. Plus is for it's not open and minus for it is open. I don't know. Well, let's style this a little bit to make it a little bit nicer. So inside of this app CSS, I'm going to say accordion indicator. I'm going to say float right font size of maybe 30 pixels. And let's see if that makes it look better. You know what I could do instead? I'm going to say position is absolute. Make sure I'm going to add position relative to the header. And I want this to be 10 pixels to the right and 10 pixels from the top. All right, so that still doesn't look that great. I'll just move this around a little bit until it looks better. All right, that's kind of getting better. How's that look? I think that looks OK. So it's styled to the right now. It looks a little bit better. Now what we want to also do is display an image of the product or whatever we're trying to display. So I'm going to put an image here and give it a class name of accordion uh, image, I guess. And that image, whoa, that image is going to point to a picture of a chocolate chip cookie. So I do have a picture over here. I'm just going to use this, the href and I could point that image to that JPEG. So notice now the image is gigantic. Um, sorry, this is complaining about not having an alt. So we want to style the accordion image as well. So if I make another class here and call it accordion image, I just want to give it a fixed height and a width. So I'll set it with 100 pixels and see how that looks. Uh, that's probably too much. I'll go 70. And then again, we want to give it a position of absolute. And we want to make it attached to the left side of the accordion. So I'm going to say left is 20 pixels. Do 30 pixels because that's how we did it over there. All right, so that looks pretty good actually. And then the last thing is the text inside the accordion, like it could have some padding and some uh, text align. So I'm going to say accordion body. I'll say text align left. And I will say, you know, font size, 20 pixels, padding left 10 pixels, padding right 10 pixels. Let's see how this looks. <clears throat> All right, so it doesn't look too bad. Um, again, this is in a CSS tutorial, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time on that. All right, so that I think that basically wraps up the accordion. But what I want to do now is it doesn't make sense to do an accordion like this because you'd have to have a different state for every single accordion that you have on the page. So in this case, where let's use a different component. We're going to make a component pull all this accordion code out into that component and use that in our app. So I'll make a new file called accordion.jsx and that's going to be a react functional component. And that is going to basically call all the same code here. So in fact, I could just copy and paste all this. Make sure I get the parentheses here. And with the exception of we don't want to render app, so we copy all that code, make sure we import use state. 
this should work. Now what I can do here is I'm going to import that component we just created. So import accordion from dot slash accordion. And now instead of rendering it here, we could just do this and get rid of all this other stuff that we added in. Okay. All right, so now the app is working just like it did before. I'm going to load up my terminal just in case. Refresh. All right, so everything works good. Now the issue again is that this accordion component is hard coded to always display chocolate chip cookies. So what we're going to do is provide some properties that we can pass in to have it dynamically change what it's doing. So the first thing you'll see is we want to dynamically change the image to be something else depending on what type of item it is. So I could pass in the image here. And then instead of hard coding source to that URL that we had of the cookie, we could point it to image. If I save this, it'll probably crash because we are not passing image here. So inside the accordion props, inside the app component, let's pass in that URL like we did before. And notice that it's showing up. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other props as well. We have a title and we also have a body. Okay, so for title, that would be here. So instead of hard coding chocolate chip cookies, we're going to render out the title. And then I'm going to go back to where I'm using this component and say title is equal to chocolate chip cookies. All right, and finally, there is body. So I'm going to take this lorem ipsum and I'm going to render out body instead. Go back to here. I'm going to render out that text. And there you have it. Now you have an accordion that can dynamically be passed in props to change what it's rendering. So if I wanted to copy and paste this a couple of times, we'd have two different accordions and both of their open closed state are managed inside their component state. Okay. And the last thing I want to do is I wanted to basically give you a real life example of when you may actually use this. So Typically in your web application, you're going to be fetching from a backend that has a list of products or a list of things, right? Unless you have everything hard coded. So it would make sense that all of your products comes from a variable. Okay. So this variable, we could say title and we could basically copy and paste all of this same logic out. Okay. So I'm going to copy this out and I'm going to just fix the syntax because you can't use equal signs inside of objects. Let's see. This is complaining because I think there's spaces. All right. So like I was saying, typically you have an array of products and you want to loop over them. So in React, we could just say, do the curly braces, say products.map, if you're familiar with the map function. And we want to basically render out an accordion using those products. So each one of these product callback is going to be basically this object here. So instead of hard coding title image and body here, we could just say product dot title. Whoa. Okay, we could say product dot image. And of course, we could say product dot body. All right, so I'm going to save that and notice that now we get the same output as before, but if I were to go into this products list and add like five or four, notice that we get back all these different products. And again, this is kind of to set our code up in such a way that if we were connecting to a real backend and we had a bunch of data come in, we didn't know what that data was, we could just render it based on what the backend returned to us. Okay, so that, I'm gonna show one last little cute little trick you can do in React, um, basically, if you know that the props that your component depends on, such as title, image, and body, are the identically named as the object that you're passing in, one thing you could do is you could just do dot 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 product, so an object destructuring, and pass that as properties to your accordion. So this will work exactly like it did before, but it's a little bit cleaner. But just know that if you were to actually have one property that was different, so if it is like my body HTML or something, notice that your component will break now because 
again, the name of the properties have to match the name of your object properties here. All right, so that wraps up my little accordion tutorial. If you enjoyed watching this tutorial, be sure to leave me a thumbs up and give me a comment. Um, I hope this helped by showing you how I built out a simple accordion inside the AppJS and then I refactored it into a, a, another React component and then refactored and refactored. I hope that it helped you learn. You know, one thing I could do, sorry, let me, before I wrap this up, let me do something. <clears throat> it would make sense if we had the CSS um, defined in an accordion.css file instead of app.css. So I'm going to take all this accordion stuff out of app.css and I'm going to put it inside accordion.css. And then inside my accordion.jsx, I'm going to import um, I think I could just import accordion.css. Is that how you do it? Maybe I got to do that. I think I need a dot slash. Hold on. All right, there you have it. So now the actual accordion JSX is importing the CSS directly. And you could use like CSS, like modular CSS so that it's scoped. Um, but we're not going to be doing that. I'm just kind of showing you that you can kind of not muddy up your app.css. All right, so this wraps up this tutorial. If you enjoyed watching this, be sure to leave me a, a like, give me a subscribe, and leave a comment below. I hope this was a good tutorial to learn how to use various different React features and how to build out small little components in React that you might use in a larger application. All right, my name is Cody Seibert, and thank you for watching another Web Dev Junkie video. Have a good day.